All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Dreamer, being made by forum user Art Whaley, who looks to add into the game a fun new vertical takeoff space plane, which design-wise has very much been inspired by both real as well as fictional spacecraft, and I just love that sort of thing. And hey, who doesn't like a nice shiny new space plane to play around with, so let's just jump right on into the VAB and take a look at what this parts pack does have to offer us. And the first thing that uh, is a very, very big plus for this mod is the mod maker actually took advantage of the manufacturer tab. I absolutely love it when mod makers do this because oh so many of them seem to forget that this is here and you have to end up finding your things just by navigating blindly through all of these tabs. But yes, this glorious mod maker gave us the Axial Aerospace tab, which has all of our delicious parts for this mod, which of course includes the, probably the most important part, the actual Dreamer space plane body, which is, well, the primary component. You can't have a Dreamer space plane without the sort of a uh, command capsule for it. And it's a pretty good little capsule, crew capacity total of seven, though there there are only four IVA seats inside of this thing, so the remaining three just kind of exist in the ether, and you have to click on the uh, crew hatch right here uh, to get them out again. And uh, it does have its own uh, electrical generation capability, RCS, reaction wheel, SAS, your typical crew report, uh, apparently an ablator, well of course you've got that for the heat shielding. And, well, a liquid fuel, electric charge, monopropellant, and oxidizer, all in sizable little quantities, and you can always adjust it here. Now, these are sort of the defaults for it, uh, the sort of 265 of a 295 possible, 90 of 180 possible on the liquid fuel, and 110 of 210 on the oxidizer, and you can, uh, you know, sort of bump these up here, which is lovely, so you have a good amount of fuel and electrical charge to uh, service most missions, I would say. But a fun little extra that this has is the open cargo bay. If we pop that thing open, there we go. We got a lovely, lovely little cargo bay here, which if we grab a part, you'll notice that it does have an attachment point right there that we can use. And this particular mod does come with three built-in sort of modules that you can pop into here, or of course, with that attachment point right there, you can just build your own stuff. But the three inbuilt cargo bay inserts are one for the Kerbal attachment system, which uh, is a little cargo bay insert which has some storage, a winch, pipe attachment points, etc. Very good, very handy if you do have the Kerbal attachment system installed. There we go, look at that lovely little thing. So you got the little winch there, a little uh, pipe attachment point and storage there. Excellent. Now we also have the Dreamer Utility Container, which is built for the TAC Life Support System and will hold TAC Life Support Supplies. So you pop that in there and your crew will hopefully survive for a while, provided you give them enough water, oxygen, etc. Whatever TAC Life Support does. It's been ages since I've actually played with that mod. And then finally we have the Dreamer Auxiliary Fuel Tank, which adds an additional 360 liquid fuel and an additional 440 oxidizer. And we just pop that in and there we go. We've got a nice little bit of extra fuel and then we can just close that cargo bay up and we're good to go for our flight. Now, of course, we do need to finish actually building the Dreamer space plane here. So the first part we're gonna grab is this vertical control surface, which is of course a control surface with uh, you know good speed actuators, etc. And this is sort of the back tail fin of the plane. If we pop it there, so it's this attachment point right on the back that we hook this to. Oh god, not that angle, I'm now having trouble. There we go, beautiful. We then have two wings to add on, a right wing and a left wing, both with a good uh, lifting surface as well as a control surface actuator speed ratings, etc. So let's grab the right wing there, and then of course the left wing for the other side, and it's starting to come together quite nicely and starting to actually look like a space plane. Now the next thing we have is the nose cone, and this is actually 
actually quite a nice little nose cone because it also is an extendable docking port, which is quite cool. And as you can see, it is its own control surface, has some RCS thrusting, and of course, an additional ablator. So very nice there. And we just pop that thing on top. And if we right click, we can open up that docking point shield. And there you go. You have your little docking port to just sort of go straight at a space station good times. And then we also have a rear docking port, which if we grab is attached to this attachment point on the back rather than this secondary one here. But there we go. Pop that on. And it's a much larger docking port. So if you have a, you know, larger docking port on a main station, you can sort of back into this and hopefully all will be well. We then, of course, have two Dreamer OMS engines, which, of course, have an alternator. They have a decent amount of thrust of uh, 27.69 kilonewtons in atmosphere, 40 kilonewtons in vacuum, engine ISP of 270 atmosphere, 390 vacuum, and consume a fuel at a rate of 0.941 per second on liquid fuel and 1.15 per second on oxidizer. Uh, not the best of engines in the world, and they are, in fact, actually quite tiny. There it is, right there. It's uh, about the size of my cursor. Lovely. And you just pop one on either side there, and that is your just uh, little engines there for some added maneuverability. Always good. Now, of course, this is a space plane. It may be launched vertically into space, but it lands horizontally on a runway, so it needs wheels. And we have right and left landing gears here, so pop that one on. That was the right then the left, and then, of course, the nose gear. Excellent, there we go. And these, we can then raise the gear up on the right-click selection. Beautiful. And equally, we can do that to then lower the gears later when coming in for a landing. Excellent, they all fit in quite nicely, and, well, We've basically got a full space plane here. Now, if we wanted to, we could pop this thing onto the runway and just, you know, flatten it out with the uh, landing gear out and take this baby off. But <laughs> considering these tiny little engines, it ain't going to get far. This thing is designed and meant to be launched via a rocket, more specifically an Atlas V style rocket. And so that's what we're going to build next. That is what the remaining parts in this mod are for, and, well, they're wonderful. So the first thing we're going to need is the Dreamer Stack Decoupler. And this decoupler changes this rear end of the ship from its interesting shape down to a 2.5 meter size of rocket. So technically, you don't need to use these uh, centaur sections, etc. But you kind of should. You could just build a normal 2.5 meter rocket behind this thing, but because of the aerodynamics of the space plane on top, these particular rocket parts are sort of meant to go with it because of their gimbling, etc. They're designed to keep this thing stable, whereas a uh, normally regularly built 2.5 meter rocket, oh, you're going to need a lot of control surfaces added to that thing to compensate for the aerodynamics of this. But... For now, let's just focus on our lovely Centaur upper stage, which is the next piece after this uh, Dreamer Stack Decoupler. And we just pop this thing right there. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the modeling and texturing on this baby. Especially that top bit. Let's actually unclick that for a second. I just, I love that. I actually wish it could be seen better, but with how this attaches, the attachment point sort of sinks it into the decoupler there, which I think is a little disappointing. I, I, I quite like the modeling up there, but oh well, what are you gonna do? Now then, once we scroll down, oh, actually, I should probably talk about the engine of this thing, shouldn't I? Uh, yes, it's quite a powerful little engine at uh, atmospheric thrust of 426 kilonewtons, 500 kilonewtons in vacuum, and an engine ISP of 290 atmosphere, 340 vacuum, and uses quite a bit of fuel at 13.496 per second on the liquid and 16.495 per second on the oxidizer. It does have its own built-in reaction wheel, and, uh, you know, we'll produce electric charge, etc., etc. So this thing, again, it's designed to sort of counteract the aerodynamics of this baby up here. And then once we have that attached, we then need the Atlas V interstage. There we go. We oh, oh god, this one's always kind of a little finicky to get attached. Beautiful. Got our fairings down, and now this is another decoupler, and we attach to it the common core booster tank. 
which is just gigantic. Okay, there we go. I actually think, yep, we need to go up. <laughs> this booster stage is gigantic. So let's, I think we gone up enough. All right, excellent. So scroll down. There we go. And look at this just ginormous thing. It is just huge, so huge. <laughs> And it is just a gigantic fuel tank, which actually, if we click over here, has a 2,880 liquid fuel, 3,520 oxidizer. And you attach to the bottom of this the CCB engine module, which has its own control surface, as you can see here. And then the engine has a lot of thrust, an atmospheric thrust of 1,620 kilonewtons, vacuum of 1,900 kilonewtons, engine ISP of 290 atmosphere, 340 vacuum, and the liquid fuel it consumes at a whopping 51.286 per second and oxidizer at 62.683. And of course, has a pretty good gimbling range of five degrees. And we just slap that on the bottom and Bam! We have ourselves a Dreamer rocket. And it's lovely. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna launch this thing. Let's, uh, <laughs> throw on one of these launch stability enhancers just to make sure it doesn't tip over when we go out to the launch pad. And when we should be good. Yes, all well, the staging looks correct. And we have a full complement of crew, so let's go to the launch pad and see how this thing flies. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> I did a small test earlier of just the top stage up here. I haven't actually tested this bottom stage yet, so I'm, uh, I'll be as shocked as you guys if it all goes to hell. Well, actually, that probably wouldn't be very shocking considering me at the helm. Now, let's take a look at the interior IVA, or, well, that's a little bit redundant to say that, uh, of the actual space plane here. So let's go to Jebediah's view. And it is a glass cockpit using the roster prop monitor mod. So we do have a glorious little cockpit system here that we can, you know, go and mess around with, do whatever we want, etc. Good times. I, I do quite like the whole glass cockpit system. You gotta love the roster prop prop monitor mod and all the glorious things it's added in. We go over to the other seat here. Uh, just on the other side, we have some lovely camera controls built into the uh, design of the ship, which is quite cool. So we can adjust these and you can see either side of the craft, which is quite nice. And zoom in and out, etc. Very, very cool. Then in the back, we have these two seats, which just have a small little screen here with some uh, you know, target management built in, different velocities. It, all, all good stuff, all good stuff. Apparently, docking module controls right there. Beautiful. And then the last seat here is just, again, more different controls. Apparently, engineering station. <laughs> I hadn't noticed that those little labels were on this thing. So let's see, we have engineering station. Does this have a little label somewhere, or is it just pilot because we're in Jebediah's seat? I, I think it's just that. <laughs> we have the fuel cages there, all very nice. Very good indeed. But yes, that is the internal view. We do have all seven Kerbals in here, but sadly, like I said, we only have the four IVAs. All the rest of the Kerbals are just hidden inside of this hatch. You can see down here, we have Thompkin Terman. Uh, Terman, no, Kerman. There we go, I can talk today. And so yeah, that's the internal view. Quite lovely, I do enjoy it. It is a rather beautiful internal view, I do like the roster prop monitor usage, though the actual texturing on the inside, uh, let's, let's actually go back in real quick. The actual texturing besides the roster prop monitor stuff is a little bit low, so I'm hoping that will be improved in the future, especially if we go to the back. Eh, you can you can definitely tell the sort of lower quality of the rest of the interior, but the roster prop monitor stuff is beautiful. So <laughs> there we go, and let's take this baby off in three, two, one. Lift off, there we go, full throttle up, and we're just gonna go straight up into the air. I wanna see how high we can get just flying straight up. That's how I usually test out the power of my rockets. I like to see how far it will go without doing any maneuvering so then I can tell later on, well, okay, well, if I make this maneuver at this point, we'll be good. But yes, we're already getting the uh, speed effects. Hopefully we actually don't get overheated. Also, while we're flying up in the air, I also should mention uh, the ship requirements for this mod. 
Uh, you do also need to download the Fire Spitter plugin for things to work. And it's not exactly, well, hmm, it's probably necessary. It is suggested that you also download the Kerbal Joint Reinforcement mod because, uh, I mean, it is kind of a big thing. And this center bit here would be kind of damaging, most likely, if you uh, didn't have the Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. But there we go. Bottom stage got us pretty darn high up in the air, 122,000 meters. It did almost catch us on fire, but oh well. So let's drop that stage and continue going up. <laughs> on the second stage, which doesn't have nearly as much fuel, but should do quite a nice job at getting us up even higher. So we are at 122,000 meters. And let's see when this fuel run out on here. Oh, stage only. There we go. There we go. We're about half fuel on this stage. And how high is it going to get us? Quite high. Oh yeah, this thing could easily get into a nice good orbit very safely. So, we have now doubled our uh, apoapsis there. Beautiful, and we're still going. So quite a nice, powerful rocket. The second stage definitely does a good job at getting us higher into space, and most likely is the one you would use to sort of get yourself into a nice elliptical orbit. Now, of course, eh, I'm not trying that. <laughs> you can do that later if you actually want to properly fly the thing. I'm just testing it out. So let's actually, what the hell, let's cut this thing off because it's going to get us way higher into space than I had originally expected it to, quite frankly. And then, yes, we have our lovely, lovely little space plane. Ah, look at it. It's glorious. All right, let's get a, oh, I can't really get that great of an angle. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. We have the little section dropping behind us and a beautiful, gorgeous view of the planet. And yes. Once you have gotten your craft into orbit, this can come back down quite nicely. Has its own built-in heat shields, of course, for you to then, hopefully, attempt to land it at the runway. Now, with how I've launched this craft, that would be in suicide to actually try. <laughs> and plus, I'd probably never land it anyways with how horrible I am at landing planes. But nonetheless, you could if you were a decent pilot in the game. So let's just sort of uh, finish by shooting off its engines and... Doing a backflip for some strange reason. I don't know why I've decided to do this, but I have. But yes, that is the Dreamer Space Shuttle. If you would like to check it out for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description, as always. And I definitely suggest for you to go and have a gander. It is a pretty cool little space plane, which I'm just flipping through space randomly. Again, I don't know why. But yes, if you make anything fun with this uh, particular mod, like perhaps you've docked multiples of them to your space station, I would love to see it. But yeah, that is going to be it for this particular mod episode. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching my friends, and as always, have a good one.